So Microsoft Technology Associate or MTA certifications are a great place to start if you want to get into the technology field. These MTA certifications address a wide spectrum of fundamental technical concepts, they assess and validate core technical knowledge, and they enhance technical credibility. Now that's a lot of sales speak from Microsoft, but basically these exams allow you to kind of dip your toe in the water and test out these different areas and see, one, whether or not you're interested in going into that area of technology. Is this something you'd like to pursue? They also allow you to validate that you know that information, that foundational knowledge, so they can help you get that entry-level position that you're maybe trying to get, right? If you want to go into a software development or working with databases, and we'll, we'll take a look at what exams they have available here uh, in just a minute. All right, so these are really good entry-level certifications. They're a little less expensive. We'll take a look at that uh, compared to, say, some of the normal certifications. So it's a, it's a really good place to start your IT career. Now, there is an important caveat that I want to point out. MTA exams do not qualify for any other certifications. In other words, they're not stepping stones. Some certifications, you take it, you earn that certification, and then you add something else to it, and you can increase your certification level. Not so with the MTA. These are pretty much standalone. They're just going to give you the ability to validate your knowledge and, like I said, maybe test the waters and see if it's something that you want to get into. All right. Now, I said that it's, it's a broad spectrum of, of technologies that these MTAs cover. Um, so let's take a look at which ones are available. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go out to docs.microsoft.com, and then we're going to browse through the available certifications. And I'll make sure that link is put uh, in the notes down below so that you can get there. But honestly, a, a quick internet search for Microsoft certifications, find the one that points back to docs.microsoft.com, and it'll most likely take you to this page. Now, when you get here, there's going to be information about a lot of exams and a lot of certifications. And first, let's clear up that point, right? The difference between an exam and a certification. An exam is something you take and pass, right, hopefully, and then the certification is what you earn once you've successfully passed that exam. Some certifications are one-to-one. -one. Take an exam, get a certification. Other certifications might take two or three exams to earn that certification. The MTAs, for the most part, are one-to-one. -one. There might be one or two of them that require two exams, but for the most part, they're one-to-one, -one. and you'll be able to tell that here when we take a look. So. The first thing you want to do when you come to this page is filter this down because it's showing you all of Microsoft exams and all of Microsoft's certifications. We're interested in the Technology Associate or the MTAs. So what you do is over here on the left-hand side, you'll see a list of filters. And if we scroll down, there'll be a section for certification types right here, right? So we can see that right there. And then there's a checkbox for MTA. We're simply going to select that and that's going to filter our results to only show us those MTA certifications. So let me zoom back out, select MTA, and I'm going to scroll back up and you'll see we're down to 12 results, right? So oops, as I cross that out, we don't want to cross that out, uh, I'm down to 12 results. These are the 12 result or the 12 MTA certifications that we have available. And I'll zoom in, I'll scroll down a little bit uh, and zoom in. A and you can see there's things like database fundamentals. Windows Server Administration Fundamentals, Security Fundamentals. But as we go down, you'll see things like Introduction to Programming using Java. Uh, let me zoom out so I can scroll down. And we'll take a look at the rest of these down here. Uh, HTML5 Application Development, Introduction to Programming using HTML and CSS, uh, Introduction to Programming using JavaScript. So I said, so it's a broad range of technologies that these MTAs cover. Anything from database administration to server administration to programming applications or websites gives you that flexibility. Well, I want to test this out. Maybe this is something I want to go into. Uh, let me see what it's like. Let me see, or if I am getting ready to go into this area, maybe I know I want to do programming with JavaScript. I need to prove my knowledge to get that entry-level position. This is a great thing to do. I can come in here, take this foundational level exam, and when I go to apply for that job and they say, what's my experience? Well, I don't have experience yet. I'm just getting started, but here's my certification. I know how to work with this technology and I can prove it because I have a certification. I've passed the exam. That's the idea behind these MTAs. 
All right, let me zoom back out and scroll back up because as you look at these, one of the things you're going to want to do when you decide which area you'd like to try, the next thing you need to do is figure out what it is you need to pass that exam, right? You want to be successful when you go in and you take that exam. So you need to understand what that exam is going to test you on. You need to do two things. What are the prerequisites? What do I need to know, right? Is there anything that they assume that I already know? And then what is the exam going to cover? And it's gonna be different based on each one of these, right? So depending if you go to database fundamentals versus security fundamentals, the skills measured are gonna be different. So you'd find out by clicking on any one of these. So let's take that security fundamentals, for example. So I'm gonna click on that. And that's going to take me to this screen here. And it's going to give me a, a high level overview. And when you look at the description here, it basically repeats what I was just saying about the MTA that, hey, it's a great place to start. There's a broad range of topics. How is that helping me get ready for this particular exam? Well, it's not, all right? It's a little tricky. When you first click on it, what you're really looking at is the certification itself, right? What I said you get after you pass the exam. What you need to know is details about the exam so that you can get the certification. So let me zoom back out. And you'll see down here, if I scroll down a little bit, all right, right here it says, here's the certification you're going to earn, all right? And then over here is the exam that you're going to take. And as I said, it says, wait, the skills measured, oops, as I cross that out, skills measured none. Well, that's not true. What you need to do is click on the exam itself that will earn you this certification. So when you click on the exam, now you're going to get details about the exam you're getting ready or you would like to go take. And as I zoom in here, you'll see that it tells me what is going to be involved. And I want to point out in particular, like right about here, you'll see where it says candidates are expected to have some hands-on experience with Windows Server, Windows-based networking, Active Directory, anti-malware products, firewalls, network topologies, devices, and network ports, right? So now going into this exam, you know what's expected. You need to have some familiarity with that. And if you don't, then you need to look at some training options, like coming to IT Pro TV, where we offer courses on these technologies to help you get prepared for these exams. All right, the other thing you'll need to know, besides the prerequisites, is what is actually covered in the exam. And if I scroll down a little bit, we'll see this skills measured section. And let me zoom in here. And this is where they break down what it is they're gonna test you on. And you'll see that it's actually divided up into, in this particular case, four domains. But that changes, right? Each one of the MTAs you look at will have a different breakdown of what they're measuring, uh, what skills they're testing on. But here for the security one, understanding security layers, right? That's 25 to 30% of your exam understanding operating system security options. That's gonna be another 35 to 40% of your exam. And you can see the other two there, network security, security software. That's the high level breakdown of the skills that are gonna be tested for that exam, but it still doesn't help me prepare for the exam. Right below there, you'll see that blue link, download exam skills outline. That's really what we're after. This is going to be your roadmap to prepare for this certification. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna click on that. And that's gonna open up in a separate window. And what you'll see, I'm gonna zoom in so we can read that a little bit better, there we go, um, is it breaks down now that security layers is broken down into a little more granular information, right? I can see what it is they expect me to know. Understand core security principles, confidentiality, integrity, availability, et cetera, et cetera. You'll also notice that when they make changes to these, which they haven't done in a while, you'll see the date there is actually 2016, they put in red, what those changes are. So when you go to take this, as you get ready to prepare for this one, make sure you come in here, click on that objective list because it might have changed since I filmed this video. All right, so go in there, take a look at it, make sure you're working with the most current objectives. And here's what I like to do. Print this out, right? Print this out, keep it beside you, and then use it as a checklist. As you check off each one of those, okay, I'm gonna go study internet security. Use my, my search tools and my browsers, read up on internet security, take a course here at IT Pro TV, whatever it is you choose to do, get a good book on this subject. And then as you learn those topics, as you feel comfortable with them, go ahead and check them off. And then once you've checked off, whoops, let me zoom back out here. Once you've checked off all of these, right, and I'll scroll down to kind of show you the whole list there, 
you should be ready to go. Now it's time to go take that exam. So use this outline as a, a tool as you're preparing to kind of let you know where you're at. Some of these you might already know. You might be familiar with them. You're just like, okay, I can check that off. I know that one, right? Others are like, oh, wow, I don't know. I don't have any experience with that. Let me go do a little research on that. All right. And as I said, each one will be different. If I back out to the MTAs, right, that was the security fundamentals. Let's go take a look at Windows operating system fundamentals. All right. Again, same thing. When I click on that, I'm looking at the certification. So I want to click on the exam to get the details of what the exam is going to cover. And now I can see whether or not there's any prerequisites. Uh, and this one, it actually doesn't list any kind of prerequisites up there. It says, well, I'm sorry, it does say knowledge of fundamental Windows operating system concepts in a Windows 10 environment. You know, if you're running Windows 10 at home or on your machine, you've probably got that one covered, right? Because you have that fundamental Windows operating system concepts down. But to be sure, we're going to scroll down and we're going to click download exam skills outline. And we'll come in and we'll take a look. And you can see they've actually made quite a few changes to this one. As new versions of the OS come out, they probably need to update their exam. Go through here and make sure you're ready, right, before you go take that exam. So those are the, how you're going to find out the prerequisites for those exams, for those MTA exams, as well as how to find out what the exam is actually going to cover so that you can be prepared before you go in and take that exam. Now, once you've done all that, the last step would be just to schedule that exam. Different exams have different options. I'm going to go over here. Let's just grab one. I don't know, database fundamentals. Doesn't really matter. And I'm going to click on, or actually, I'm just going to scroll down. Right? And here's where you're going to go to schedule your exam. Right? So once you've gone through the steps of, of preparing, studying, checking off that list, it's time to schedule it. Price-wise, it'll vary based on where you're taking the exam. So you can see up here, for example, mine currently uh, is $127 for this exam. Other exams are actually different. Not each one is the same, so make sure you're looking at the exam you're trying to take. And then there's a drop-down list where you can choose your country, and this will determine in the end what that cost is going to be. So I'm in the U.S., so I can see it's going to cost me $127 U.S. currently. That can change, so make sure you always go and get the latest information. And then you have two choices down here. I can either choose to schedule with a company known as Pearson View, or I can use Certiport. All right, so what is the difference? Why would I choose one or the other? Pearson View does both testing centers, where you go into a testing center, you sit in a little booth and it's proctored. They also offer online exams, where you can take this from home or from work, which in today's environment, right, with the 2020 pandemic going on, this is a very popular option. I can sit at home and I can take this exam. Certiport is limited to in-house, where basically you have to go to a Certiport testing center in order to take that exam. You can use either one. The cost, I don't believe, is going to be any different between the two. Um, so you might have a Certiport location near you, which you can take advantage of that. Or you might want to do it online, which you're going to need to use Pearson View. Or the testing center that's close to you might be Pearson View based. So the, what you're going to do is click on each one of these, or whichever one, and then it'll let you put in your area, tell you where uh, the closest testing center is, and see what your options are. And make sure you do that, because I know not too long ago with the 2020 pandemic, for example, Pearson View didn't have any testing centers open. They were all closed. The only option was to take it online. Uh, now they've reopened some of those testing centers, so you can go and check and see if there's one open in your area. I will caution you, though, right? Because, as I said, it really doesn't matter which one you use. It's the same exam. It's the same certification in the end, right? But once you start taking your exams with these different vendors, you basically get a profile, right? A collection of all your certifications that you can go and look at. And you can say, here's my transcript of all these different tests I have taken. Pearson View or Certiport are two separate organizations. So if you take some with Certiport and some with Pearson View, you're going to have two separate transcripts that you're going to have to look at or try to merge. And that can be a little challenging. Uh, and I will tell you that as you get into the higher level certifications with Microsoft, a Certiport's not an option. You can only do Pearson View. So my recommendation, if you're going to continue on into your Microsoft certification journey, go ahead and start with Pearson View, and that way you can keep all of your certification results under that same profile uh, and not have to worry about having them split across two different vendors. All right, so that's a look at the Microsoft Technology Associate exams. Gives you the ability to go in there, find out which ones are available, and see which one is right for you.